Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jupiter James and this is Astro Motivation where I awaken the astrologer within you and aim to give you a little inspiration and motivation per your unique placement within your birth chart. You know, I really do feel that before a time of iPhones and iPads and I this and I that, we were a culture and a society that were better able to look up at the stars and understand exactly where our dreams were and how to get them. And so if that sounds good to you, let's get into it. Today we're gonna get into a highly requested topic and a, a, a topic that will segue into what high have been on for a minute, which is love and marriage and things of that nature, and that's Juno. Juno is one of the four major asteroids within astrology, and this particular asteroid in astrology will indicate your marriage life, your soulmate, and a little bit of where you can meet that soulmate and who they will be and what you look for within your marriage union and what you will quite possibly get. I like to look to Juno as the last little point and indicator that sums up everything you know it sums up where you'll meet the person it sums up how they'll be what you'll look for in a relationship what the union itself will be juno comes with a wealth of knowledge and i just would like to say that this is your soulmate video this is the video that is going to point you in the direction of your soulmate and will also key you in to let you know what you are looking for in a marriage and what needs you will want in a marriage, what that marriage will look like, also what that person will give and what they will embody and what you will attract, okay? And so if that sounds good to you, let's move forward, okay? So first and foremost, um, I want you to go ahead and follow these directions right here, okay? And once you follow those directions and you've got your chart pulled up, what I want you to do is two things, okay? I want you to locate the house that your Juno is in, all right? And according to the house that your Juno is in, I want you to watch the timestamp that matches that house, all right? From there, I want you to go ahead and locate the sign of your Juno, and whatever sign your Juno is in, I then want you to watch that sign within the timestamps of this video. So you should be watching two timestamps in total to figure out the full conglomeration or the full analysis of how you'll meet your soulmate, what your soulmate will be like, what you look for in a soulmate, what your union, what your marriage life will look like and what you will need and what you will want and what it will all encompass, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. If you have Juno in Aries, this or the first house, this is gonna make for a partner that you crave a partner who is very masculine, someone who is direct, who is somewhat powerful and has a lot of energy, someone who has a lot of, of a competitive spirit and is just a go-getter and is just, you know, a little fiery. You want passion is what I get. And you also will want a partner that kind of reminds you of you. I know that seems a little, you know, far-fetched, but have you ever seen those couples that kind of look like brother and sister or they kind of favor each other, whether it be in their personality or whether it be in their physical appearance? This is what you will um, attract. This is what you will find within the soulmate of your partners that they will have similar quali qualities to you. You know, you guys will have some things that are, are, whether it be physically or moralistically or, you know, just in general, a lot will be similar to you and your partner, okay? And with that being said, you may find your partner will, you, two ways can go with Aries, okay? It's either your partner will approach you or you will approach your partner and i do know that you may meet your partner in a very competitive space you know you may meet your partner in a very uh you know uh i like to say a very like there's a clashing moment within the meeting of your partner you may not like your partner initially you may be the way they approach you will be so fiery and so direct that it may come off a little offensive it may be like excuse me did you just bump into me excuse you and then all of a sudden you go wait actually kind of cute like what's your name it's very much that type of um that type of pow energy you know this is going to be in the first wave and the tone of your relationship it's going to be the first meeting is going to be a little fiery it's going to be a little bit abrasive it's going to be like either a crash or there's something going wrong you guys could this could be that enemies to lover type of trope where at first you didn't like the person now you do um, but they are going to remind you a lot of yourself they really really are and um, that may be annoying at first. That may be something that you have to warm up to, but it'll be very quick. It'll be very quick and fiery. Also, 
with this, this person will be very masculine, okay? Whether they are a female or a male, they will be very masculine. Whether it be in their appearance, in their aura, in the way that they handle things, in the way that they go about life, they will have a lot of masculine energy, okay? A lot of go-getter energy, and they will be somewhat, you know, they can teeter on the side of selfish, but what I do know is that they're gonna be a fighter. They're gonna be someone that is gonna exude their own willpower. They are not gonna be someone that you can push over or that you're gonna, um, you, you know, it's gonna be a lot of power struggles is what I'm saying, but this makes for a very fiery union and this is what you will want within your relationships. This is how you will be. You will fight for your partner. You will fight with your partner. You will be someone that is very passionate with your partner and they will remind you of you, okay? So if you have Juno in Aries or Juno in the first house, let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know if this is the type of partner that you want. Do you want a very sporty, competitive, masculine type of partner, a, a passionate and fiery union somewhere where it's like it just gets you to sizzle. It's just very fiery and just uh, it's it, I don't know. I just it reminds me of a lot of fire and just a lot of sweat and heat I don't know why it, it reminds me of that when you have Juno in Aries in the first house But they will definitely remind you of you. Let me know in the comments if you're excited about that Let me know in the comments if um, this resonates with you as a part of what you want within your marriage union um, And I will see you on the next little wave. All right. Bye <laughs> If you have Juno in the second house or Juno in Taurus, this is going to make for a partner who is very stable. You are going to want to be very stable within your love relationships, okay? What you want, what you are looking for, what you exude, and what you will attract is someone who is very stable, okay? You want to be stable within a relationship. You want to be committed. You want to be loyal, and you're going to attract that as well. You may also find that you attract a partner who shares the same values and morals that you do, which is very important in a marriage and a, a union, right? This is also the energy of someone who you will attract a person when you are um, carrying out your, your um, loyal duties or you are someone who is going to be very loyal within your unions, okay? You may find your partner while you are handling money, while you are at a bank, while you are doing something luxurious, while you are eating. The first wave, the first meeting of your partner is going to be very much you um, revolving around the luxuries of life, you hand handling money, you handling art, you handling beauty, um, or food, good quality food, okay? I always bring up the restoration hardware example where your first meeting could be in a place where it's of extreme luxury, quality, and food, okay? Or handling of money, a bank, a, uh, a makeup store, um, a clothing department, somewhere where luxury is being, you're in the midst of luxury, beauty, art, and money, and food is where you're gonna meet your partner, okay? And they will be someone that is very loyal, very stable, very monetarily stable. They will also be someone that aims to kind of take care of you and they will have similar values as yourself. So let me know if you are excited about the first meeting of your soulmate within this Juno placement. Let me know if this is how you want um, to be within a committed relationship? Do you want to be with someone who's very loyal, who's very stable, who's very, you know, monetarily gifted and who shares the same values as you? I, I do. Hello, I do. This is what you will see with that placement, okay, is that you're going to really attract that type of relationship, which is very, very important. Let me know if you're excited about that, all right? And I will see you on the next video. Bye. If you have Juno in the third house or Juno in Gemini, this is going to give the energy of a relationship or a marriage bond that you want to create with a partner where there is an over communication. You want to communicate, communicate, communicate. Communicating is going to be the most important factor within your union and within your relationships, especially within your marriage relationship, okay? You're going to find that you attract a lot of partners or you're going to attract your soulmate who is going to be extremely communicative, extremely cerebral. These are the types of relationships where they talk from sunup to sundown. They're always relating information back back and forth towards each other. They may want to teach each other something. They may also have a slight social quality to their relationships, okay? So this is what's going to be very important for you. Now, also with Gemini 
or third house, you may meet your partner in your local neighborhood while you are getting things done within your local neighborhood or they may be a neighbor of yours, okay? And they may also have a big connection with their siblings. Either you meet them through their siblings, either they are a twin or just your the siblings is gonna have a really, really big connection in the way that you meet your partner, okay? Or they will just, again, be someone that is very cerebral, someone who loves to communicate, someone who loves to articulate, who loves to think, who loves to write, and this will be the union that you have, okay? This is what you will give, and this is what you will emulate, and this is what you will attract as well, and that will also be the how you meet your partners, you know, at a coffee shop, a grocery store, in the neighborhood, through the siblings, something along those lines. It could be all four of those things, or it could just be one of those things, okay? But this is what you will have when you've got Juno in the third house or Juno in the, what is it, in, in Gemini. Also, with Gemini, you could also potentially meet them on the internet, okay? But not always. That's a very rare occurrence, right? But that is a factor. You know, I wanted to throw that one in there. Let me know if you are excited about that. Is this something that you crave within your marriage unions is a bit of over-communication. You really want to know like you know like you know your partner. You want to be able to know the ins and outs. You want to know the whys. You want to really communicate, okay? Um, let me know if you are excited about that or if that's something that you resonate with because that is what you will get. Um, yeah, awesome. Okay, so I will see you on the next video. Bye. If Juno is in your fourth house or Juno is in Cancer, you are gonna find that you are gonna be someone that craves a marriage relationship that is centered around healing, comfort, family, and the domestic life. You are gonna wanna heal your partners and your partners are gonna really want you to heal them. You're gonna be taking on a very maternal tone within your relationships. You're gonna find that within your marriage union, either you both value home and family, either you both want to build a family, or the both of you really just want to stay home a lot and take care of each other and be each other's kind of like saving grace and uh, a part of each other's healing journey is what you're gonna find with this partner. You're gonna be someone that is able to get really deep with your partners and really excavate any issues or any wrongdoings or any traumas that they may hold and they may have. You may be almost like medicine to your partner and they will be that for you as well. And this will be very emotional energy. What you crave more than anything within a relationship is emotional intelligence within the union. If there is not a certain sense of an emotional depth within your marriage union or your marriage partner, you're gonna be like, gotta go, you're not doing it for me, okay? So, but you will attract this and this is also what you will exude as well, okay? Now, the way you will meet your Juno partner with it being in the fourth house or in Cancer will be in either a very healing space or the home or through the mother, okay? This person will be met at home. When you tell people how you met your partner, three, one of the three things will come up, which will be you will meet them at their home. Maybe your first date will be at their house. Maybe you pick them up from their house. Maybe they live near close to you or they have a big connection to their mother, okay? You can meet them through their mother. Something like that, like that is what this will be. But know that this person will also remind you of home, okay? They will really remind you of your family. And I know that could be a little strange for people like, oh my God, are they gonna remind me of my mom? Are they gonna remind me a little? They're gonna be very familial. They're gonna be very familiar, all right? So that is what you will find when you have Juno sitting in the fourth house or in Cancer. Let me know if this is something you are excited for, if this is something that you crave within your marriage unions, because this is something you will definitely get. You will get a dose of emotional healing, a little bit of safety, of emotional comfort, and they will aim to heal you and you will aim to heal them. And you may, this is a pension for, you know, anyone that really wants to build a solid family and have a really solid, um, safe inner world and safe inner emotions and inner relations with your an emotional relationship, this is that type of placement, okay? This is the quintessential uh, building a home type of union and placement, which is very good. Like what marriage doesn't really wanna build a very emotionally comforting and safe home, right? So that is what you will get when you have those placements. Let me know if you resonate with that in the comments below and I will see you on the next video, bye. 
If you have Juno in the fifth house or in Leo, you are gonna get a very, very show-stopping partner, a very handsome partner, a partner who is, you know, very magnetic and probably extremely creative and very artistic and just expressive. They're gonna be a world of fun. They're gonna be all the things you see in a movie. They're gonna be extremely glamorous. They're gonna get a lot of attention. So if you are the jealous type, I want you to buckle up because this person is going to pull all eyes on them and they are going to be dramatic and they're going to be show-stopping they're going to be glamorous they're going to be beautiful they're going to be they're going to have a certain sense of je ne sais quoi and a spotlight about them you know a certain type of beauty that attracts a lot of people to them and they're going to be highly highly aware and social they're going to be someone that is aware of their creativity and aware of their certain presence that they will hold okay this is very fun energy because you may meet your juno partner at a club at a party during the height of summer at a celebration at a concert at a show anywhere where someone is presenting something and there's fun or there's a celebratory attitude or feeling or vibe this is where you may meet your partner okay but again i'm gonna say it again buckle up if you are the jealous type i want you to put it in your mind that you are gonna get the hot guy you're gonna get the hot girl and they are definitely gonna be pulling in people they really are and you may have to be like look y'all better back off this one's mine you know so that is what you're gonna get with this partner let me know if you are excited about that let me know if this is something that you crave within your relationships which are a certain sense of drama a certain sense of fun it's gonna feel like a movie it's gonna feel like a grand play it's gonna feel like a show there's never gonna be a dull moment within your marriage union and within your marriage partner and this may be how you exude as well this is what you may exude within your relationships is a certain sense of fun, a certain sense of drama, a certain sense of just romance. And, and it's like, it, this is the quintessential like movie, fairy tale book type of placement where it's just like, it's dramatic, it's show stopping. You get the hot guy, you get the hot girl. Like this is, I feel like Juno is kind of at home here because this is the dating house, right? This is the dating placement. This is the, the, the pal quality that we all read about within books of the type of partner that everyone goes for, you know? Um, the one that gets all the attention and the type of romance that is storybook worthy or movie worthy, okay? So that is what you will get. Let me know if you're excited about that in the comments. I'm excited for you, you know? Um, and I will see you on the next video. Bye. If you have Juno in your sixth house or in Virgo, this is going to give somewhat of a serious tone to your relationship. This is going to give a very service oriented tone to your relationships and the relationships that you crave and the type of partner that you attract. You know, this is the type of placement where you both will help each other during your day to day schedules and routines and your goals within the day, you know, waking up at a certain time, eating the right foods, working out together, you know, uh, it just, I don't know why I always get this imagery in my mind of like, you know, one of the partners wakes up and makes a green smoothie for their partner and says, here, drink your smoothie. It's gonna give you energy. It's gonna make you healthy. It's gonna pump you up so that you can be the best at your day. This is the type of dynamic that you will have within your relationships where both of you will be this, this, couple that seeks to pump each other up and make sure and ensures that each of you are successful within your day for your career for your job for life itself you know this is that type of dynamic that you will get um where you work together where you um again help each other with what you need to do during your day and that's the type of tone and the person that you will attract you may find that your partner comes on the scene and says uh you're not doing that right, you need to change this, and I'm gonna be the one to do it. You know, this gives me that energy of like, I, again, I get imagery when I think about these things. And so it gives me that energy of like, someone coming in and rearranging their wardrobe. Someone coming in and saying, no, you've got the pots and the pans in the wrong area, let me fix that. And like, they rearrange the entire kitchen when they really were just supposed to change the pots and pans. You know, it's gonna be that type of tone where each of you are gonna aim to serve each other. Each of you are gonna aim to make sure that the both of you are doing things perfectly and doing things right so that you both can live a successful life together, all right? So that is what this will show, okay? you There may be a sense of duty to your partner as well, and they may have a certain sense of duty to you as well. Now, let me know, oh, also the way that you may meet your Juno partner in the sixth house or in Virgo will be while you're working. You could be a client of theirs, a coworker of theirs, or they could be a client or coworker of yours. This is what this will show, okay? Or you may meet this person at the gym 
or while you're getting things done during your day. You know, this is what while you'll meet your partner, where you'll meet your partner, okay, is in certain settings like that, okay? The gym, you know, um, I, I would even say a hospital sometimes, but I would say more so like the gym or a coworker or someone you work with or at work is where you will meet your partner, okay? Um, let me know if you are excited about this placement. Let me know if you are excited about having a partner that is gonna help you succeed in life because that is what this is going to give you. This is what you are going to attract, all right? So I will see you on the next video and you have a great day, bye. With Juno in the seventh house or Juno in Libra, this is really good energy because one, this kind of ensures that you're gonna get married. You know, this you've got the marriage asteroid in a marriage house of the seventh house, right, of Libra. So this is gonna give very, very good energy. You are gonna be someone that attracts someone that is so loving, that really um, wants things to be equal and harmonious and is out for the soul. Like, they, they wanna get married. They want to relate with you. They wanna be involved with you. And you are gonna be that way with them. You're gonna be so grateful. Someone that doesn't get angry very quickly or someone who just aims to keep things equal between the two of you, all right? That that fights won't happen very often because again, you guys are gonna be so harmonious and so loving towards each other. This is the quintessential placement, to be honest. This is that type of union where nothing goes wrong and you know everything's hunky-dory between you two because your marriage asteroid is in a marriage house, okay? It's gonna ensure that there is like, I won't say that there's never arguments, but it's gonna be the way you may handle those arguments are gonna be in a very loving and caring tone. Like, hey babe, I didn't like that you did that. And they're gonna be like, oh really? Okay, I'll change that. It'll be something as simple as that. That's the type of union you will want and what you crave within a relationship and what you will get, okay? So you will meet your partner. You will meet your Juno, Seven House, or Libra partner while you are out socializing, while you are out on the town socializing and networking and being out with friends and being someone who is flexing their sociability, this is how you will meet your partner. You may find that you either have a mutual friend or they will work in a common industry as you do. And if not, again, you will simply meet this person while you are out and about. So if you are the person that has Juno in Libra in the seventh house and you are sitting on the couch watching this video and you're like, where am I going to meet your partner? I'm going to say, get out of the house now. Now, they will not be your door dasher. They will not be your Uber Eats driver. Get out of the house now because you gotta go out. The, yo, yo, your person is outside, like the kids say, okay? So this is what that will be for you. Let me know if you are excited about, oh, and you also have a very beautiful partner. They will be very, very beautiful. They will, they, they will be very beautiful, very aesthetically pleasing, okay? So let me know if you are excited about this type of partner and this type of union, all right? And I will catch you on the next video, bye. If you have Juno in the eighth house or Juno in Scorpio, this is gonna give a very mysterious and powerful and dark passionate partner, okay? This is gonna give, I don't know why, it gives me very much like Christian Grey or Edwin Edward Cullen type of vibes with a hint of Harry Potter. Like that is what this gives me. It's gonna give me that magical quality of a partner who has a mysterious and dark, powerful aura about them. There's something about them that is just very uh, elusive or powerful and possessive and just, you know, and but still very deep and, and magnetic and just, it's gonna be that type of partner. So go watch Fifty Shades of Grey, go watch Twilight, cause that's the type of partner you're gonna get. You're gonna get someone that is a bit mystical, is very deep, very transformative. They may come into your life and try to transform your life. They may be very possessive and you will want a certain sense of depth between your partners. You will want them to know all about the metaphysical and things like astrology and what is going on behind the veil. And you will want them to somewhat go into the depths of your soul and excavate any traumas, any wrongdoings that you may experience you will want to be able to relay those things to your partner and for them to love on all of your traumas and all of your wounds and aim to transform and turn that around for you, okay? There's gonna be somewhat of a certain healing type of tone when your Juno is in good aspect. You know, this is what this will show, okay? But you may, this person may aim to really control you. They will be very possessive, very jealous. So be, be, be warned, they're gonna be that and they're gonna be, they're gonna have a tight grip on you and they're gonna really wanna soul bond with you. They're gonna really feel very karmic as well. This is a very karmic placement, okay? Because it's in a karmic sign and a karmic house. So this is what this will show. Now you will meet your partner 
in a somewhat secret way, okay? You may meet them at a nightclub, at a taboo situation, at a place where you're not supposed to be. You can meet them in the dead of night. You can meet them for a hookup. You can meet them in a just a taboo, dark situation or in secret where, you know, you may not even wanna tell people how you met. It could be something like that, okay? Where it's like, I don't even wanna tell you how I met my partner because if I tell you how I met my partner, That'll make you look at me a little differently, if that makes sense. That'll let that'll let you know what I do at night when no one's looking. And I don't want you to know that. You see what I mean? Like that is the type of dynamic that you will attract as far as your partner and the way you will meet them and who they will be and what you will want and what you will crave within a relationship. And that's why I say Juno is all encompassing because it gives you so much information, right? It gives you where you're gonna meet your partner. It's gonna meet you. It's gonna tell you what the union is, what you really want between each other, what you crave in a relationship what they will be what the union itself will be this is what Juno really all encompasses and tells okay so that is what you will see with this Juno in Scorpio you will also find that you may meet your partner when you least expect it when you are going through a transformation yourself when you're going from one chapter of life to the other this is when you will meet your partner and you may be like wait I I'm about to move and now you come into my life, like now we're gonna have to do long distance. It could be very much that type of dynamic where you're about to change somewhere and all of a sudden they come, right? Like it's like, why couldn't you come into my life a year ago when I was stable and I was solid? Like now you come when I'm about to pick up and everything's changing for me? Like it could be very that type of dynamic or when they do come into your life, everything changes. They will seek to transform your entire life. Everything will change, okay? That is what you will see when you have Scorpio or in Juno and Scorpio or in the eighth house, okay? So I really do hope that that helped you and I will see you on the next video, bye. With Juno in the ninth house or Juno in Sagittarius, this is gonna give for a very philosophical type of partner okay this is gonna give a very adventurous type of partner an adventurous type of union all right this is the type of union where the both of you want to be somewhat of like world thinkers of kind of like thought leaders like the both of you are relaying back and forth the knowledge that you both know and the wisdoms and philosophies that you share you may Find a partner who shares similar philosophies as you do, similar world knowledge that you do, and may seek to get on that plane, train, or automobile and discover the world with you. This is that type of partner. Now, you may also meet your partner while you are out there traveling, while you are in college, while you are learning, okay? This could be that type of partner, or you could even meet this partner through their father or your father, or they may remind you of their father. This is what this placement will be. You may also meet your partner while you are seeking to expand your knowledge, expand your life itself, and uh, they will be somewhat of a good luck charm for you because remember the ninth house in Sagittarius holds good luck energy and philosophical and spiritual energy and they will have that tone. This is will be the this is what you will crave in a relationship. You will find that if you are ever in a relationship or you ever attract someone who doesn't expand your thinking, who doesn't share the similar philosophies that you do and who is not somewhat spiritual or who has a spiritual edge to their personality or who can't teach you something, you'll be like, mm, I, I, I'm not feeling it. So this is what you're gonna find when you have Juno in Sagittarius or Juno in the ninth. You may also find that your partner will be of a different race or culture than yourself because remember, ninth house in Sagittarius is, um, you know, it's an international sign. It's from a place far beyond, right? So you may find that they may be of a different race, a different culture than yourself. They will also, or you will also, as much as you two relate philosophically, as much as you two may want to go on adventures for yourself, you are not gonna want this person to hold you too tight, okay? You are gonna want a certain sense of freedom within your expression, within who you are. The more freedom that your partner gives you, it may have the opposite effect, right? Where it's like, the more freedom you give your partner or your freedom gives you, or, or your partner gives you, you will find that you, want to stay together but the more that they hold tight to you that's when um you may want to rebel and go the other way okay so this gives me like that chinese glove type of relationship where the minute that the both of you relax and you don't care that each other may have the possibility to go away that's when 
things will go easier and things will go better but the minute you try one of you tries to hold too tight that's when friction will happen okay so this is what that will show with this type of placement let me know if this is something you crave within your relationships do you crave your partner to to share the same philosophies as you or if they don't have the same philosophies as you you want your partners to teach you something at the end of the day to come in and expand your mind or relate with you on a very philosophical or spiritual level let me know if that is you okay now um i will see you on the next video and you have a blessed day bye with juno in the 10th house this is gonna be like you know okay so there's a lot that goes on into this because this isn't a capricorn house if you have juno in the 10th house or juno in capricorn this is going to make for a placement where it gives me power couple vibes okay this gives me you will crave someone who's very mature even if they're young you will want them to be very mature very ambitious someone who is going after their career legacy someone who is um very a go-getter someone who is high up in the ranks of their career or who at least has those types of motivations okay this gives me the energy of you either dating your boss you dating your co-worker you dating someone again who's very ambitious and who shares similar um legacy goals as you do you know like that is what you will show now this may also show that when you have juno in 10 or juno in capricorn that you're gonna have very high standards for your partner to the extent that you may find that you are single longer than others only because the universe needs time to cook up this 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 person that has all these things that you check off the box now this is the phenomenon that capricorn will show because for you in your mind you will think oh my god where is my partner am i cursed like oh my god i'm cursed where's this person like i'm gonna have to wait until after my saturn return to meet a person oh my god oh my god oh my god but really what it is is that you have such higher standards that you have to realize that that others don't others simply don't have the standards that you have some people are willing to compromise on what they want some people are willing to say okay this person's got a million dollars but their morals are wrong and so i'll just take the million dollars where it's like no i want them to have a million dollars they better be good with their mom they better dress nice they better uh be someone that you know feeds the blind or you get what I'm saying it's you're gonna have so many boxes to check that it's gonna take the universe time to cook up that blessing for you and it's also going to give you that illusion of being single a bit longer than others or being without a partner longer with others only because that means that you're only because you're you're not someone that is willing to settle this is that's very good right that means that you don't want to settle you only want the best for you it's the best or nothing and you will get that but know that it's just going to take a little time it may happen after your first out of return that you meet your partner but know that you may meet them at work you may they may be a client of yours a co-worker of yours or a boss of yours or you may be their boss or you may be their client or you may be their co-worker this is what you will see with this type of placement okay so i want you to hold on don't don't sacrifice your standards i know you want when you have have juno and capricorn and know that you may need to date up okay if you are with juno and capricorn or juno in the 10th house if you are aiming to date your peers the people who are in your age group you may find that they are immature even though and it doesn't matter what age you are you may find that the people in your age group are immature because you will always have a uh, more ambitious type of standard as far as it relates to how you give away your heart or what you want in a relationship and so according to your peers you're gonna find that you, you're gonna be like, ill. no, you're immature. You guys aren't on the same wavelength as I am. You're not taking this union as seriously as I would like to. You're not taking love as seriously as I would like to. And so that's why I say date up, because if you date up, if you date up 10 years, five years, you may find that those people are on the same wavelength of being able to take a relationship as seriously as you will need it within your relationships. And that is what you will take. The, the, the tone of your relationship is gonna take on a very, very, serious quality you guys are not going to play about each other and that's very good you're you are going to want to be in a monogamous relationship you know how in the new times that we are living in everyone's so lackadaisical everyone wants to date peter paul and mary and have fun and just be lax you're gonna be like absolutely not miss me with that you're like i want a traditional 
monogamous relationship where we are loyal to each other, where we have a good home, where we have moral standards, you're gonna be very old fashioned, but I don't think it's old fashioned. I just think that you are gonna take love very seriously and that's commendable. I, 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 I vibe with that, you know? So that is what you will see with this placement. Let me know if you are excited about that type of union. Are you excited about uh, potentially marrying someone who is a little older than you, who takes the relationship seriously and who will be wildly successful and who will be just as ambitious as you are? Let me know in the comments below and I really do hope that this helped you, all right? And I will see you on the next video, bye. If you have Juno in the 11th house or Juno in the 12th house, you may have a penchant for falling for your friends, okay? You may be someone that needs your relationship to feel like it's friends first, you know, that there's a foundation of friendship, that there's a foundation of freedom and expression as well, a certain sense of intellect is what you're gonna also strive for. You're gonna find that if your partner is not does not have a certain sense of uh, uniqueness to them, whether it be in their appearance or in the way that they think, that you're at the very least are gonna wanna be with someone who's very intellectual and who is very gifted in the mind and who, you know, is very strange or genius. This is what you are gonna want within your relationships with the partners that you go for. You're gonna go for very unique partners. Be careful for going for partners who are unique, but who may not want to be tied down or who may not be want to be wrangled in okay so i would say go for the intellectual rather than the 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 unique avant-garde person who doesn't want a relationship because that is probably what you will run into you will run into geniuses who just their mind isn't on love right and you try so hard to like no be with me like oh i want this genius but this genius is going to be like out of it they're not even going to be thinking about what you're thinking about or they're not going to want to be tied down. This gives me that type of dynamic or that type of relationship where the two of you are married in your minds and in your hearts, but you're such rebels at heart that you're like, why do I need to conform to society's meaning of marriage? Like, why do I, why do we need to conform and put our names down together on taxes just so that the man can come in and, and be within our union? Like, if we are together, we are together in spirit and we are gonna be very rebellious and we're gonna be very progressive and it's gonna be that type of union where you're together, but there isn't maybe it's not on paper or you're together but maybe you guys don't buy a ring you guys have have just this common understanding of you're my partner for now we're in this together for life but there's a certain sense of freedom that you have there's a certain sense of individuality that you both have that you are able to express and carry out within the union that doesn't feel stifling that doesn't feel controlling that doesn't feel too uh conforming because you're not going to want to conform you're not going to want a relationship that fits into the general conformity of society or society's view of what a real marriage is okay and so whatever that strikes whatever tone that strikes is what it's going to be and what you will crave in a relationship and so let me know if this something if, if this is something or a dynamic that you want to attract within your unions and within your marriage partner because this is something you're going to get you know you're either going to date your friend you're going to fall for your friend um you know you are going to be someone that you can meet this person on the internet, but they are gonna have a very avant-garde and a unique way of relating, okay? They are, that is what it's gonna be, all right? So that is what you will see with this placement. I'm looking around to see if I can gather any more information as to what this will be for you because the minute I cut off this video is the minute that I'm gonna go, oh, that was more information that I had about Aquarius, you know, but I think I got it, I think I got it. But that is what you will see. Let me know if you are excited about this type of union and I will see you on the next video, bye. If you have Juno in the 12th house or Juno in Pisces, this is gonna give a very nebulous quality to the marriage union that you crave within marriage, okay? And so this is also gonna give a very nebulous and spiritual healing quality to your partners as well. You may find that you meet your partner while either in a foreign land, in places of worship, in places of healing, you know, this gives me like hospital, this gives me church, this gives me just when you travel to a faraway land, this is where you'll meet your partner or this is where they will be from, okay? Or they will have those type of qualities of spirituality about them. They will be very healing and very nebulous, sometimes confusing, okay? Now, when anything touches that 12th house, I always, always feel the need to 
give a PSA, okay? To really just drill it in. You could be someone <coughs> where I, you may be someone with Juno in Pisces or Juno in the 12th house where you may look around and go, oh my God, where's my partner? Oh my God, where's my partner? And this could take on that quality because you could simply be looking in the love in love for the wrong in the wrong places. It could be that you know you are looking for love within the type of person that may be not so good for you, or that you may fantasize that that's the type of partner that you want, but may not be actually what is possible, may not actually be what's feasible, or what is actually not healthy for you. Okay, and so I'm gonna. Put this little PSA out there that if you have Juno in Pisces or Juno in, you know, uh, what is it, the 12th house, that you approach love from a very grounded place. Because the caveat to this, the funny thing is, is that when you begin to approach love from a very grounded place and not of a fantasy stricken place, that you actually get the person that you were dreaming of. But it's going to require that you come at things from a very, very grounded approach, okay? Because Listen to me when I say this, is that your marriage and your relationship and your union will take on the tone of spirituality. It will take on a tone of something that reminds you of it being very divinely ordained and like twin flame and things of that nature. It will take on that nature. You will have a very highly spiritual union. You will have something that you will feel is sent from God. But before then, it's gonna require for you to look in the right places you know don't go for the bad guy that you feel you need to save don't go for broken birds don't go for the people that are out of it or just in a in a turmoil situation where you feel you need to come in and save them or who are going through psychological issues don't do that don't go for the liars or the people who you are imagining are a saint or a certain way but they are actually a totally different way this is going to require you to take off the rose colored glasses and is gonna require that you look for love in the right places, in the right people, in order for the universe to give you that spiritual union you've always been looking for, okay? So this may require a certain adjustment within your mind to say, okay, if I've been doing a certain thing and going after a certain partner for a while and it's not been proving successful, maybe I need to adjust what I look for. Maybe I need to adjust who I'm going for, right? Um, if I am someone that puts a fantasy on others and puts what I think that they are and they turn out to be others, maybe I need to stop putting the fantasy on people and when they show me who they actually are, I cut it off and move on to the next because it'll be in you doing that. Listen, you're, the way you're gonna relate is gonna be in such a spiritual way that the universe wants to see that you are devoted in a way to the universe first. It's gonna say, okay, clear out the karmas, clear out the past life gunk, clear out the, the bad and before you get the good, right? And it's gonna require you saying, you know what? You're not actually good for me. You're, you're not who I think you are on the first date, not in a year from now when you've been in a situation ship and like, no, in the moment. Like, it's like if you get with a person and they say that they are a singer, I want you to go, okay, show me your Instagram that you're a singer. And if they start to go, oh, well, you know, it's my dream and I'm working on it, you go, I'm out. You see what I mean? Whereas before with Juno in Pisces and Juno in uh, the 12th house, you would have been like, oh my God, you're a singer? Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay, cool, 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 great, great. And you're just taking whatever they feed you and a year from now, you find out that they, they don't even know how to play a guitar. That's just a dream of theirs, right? And in your mind, you would have went away from that date, that first date going, wow, you know, this guy's a musician and he's dreaming to be this and he's dreaming to be... No, you do not have that luxury. Do not do that. You have to learn to come at things from a very practical way. So I always get so passionate about this 12th house. I really, really do because I see so many people going wrong and it gives that illusion of a lost partner or losing love or not being granted in this life to not have a lover but really when you boil it down it's the person themselves that are looking in the wrong direction okay they're they're putting a fantasy on people who don't who who are not even in the position to date 
okay? And they may feel they need to save this person and take care of this person and in order to get them to love them. And you're going about it the wrong way, okay? Go at relationships in a very practical way so that then when you do go into it the right way, listen, when you do go into it the right way, you're gonna find that the universe gives you the person that you've been dreaming of, that you get the creative person, that you get the spiritual person, that you get the divine love that you've always dreamed of, but it's gonna require you to, to segue that. It's gonna require you to, when you see someone lying to you, when you see someone in reality who is not who they are, who they say they are, rather than you adding onto that fantasy, you get up from the table and then the universe can fast track you to the people who are actually for you and to you. So now when it comes to who you will marry and where you will find them. You will find them at a spiritual place, a hospital, a healing place, or while you're traveling, or they will be from a foreign land or from foreign travels. And um, yeah, they will be very spiritual. Your, your union is gonna take on a very spiritual tone. So let me know if you are excited about that. Are you excited about getting a divinely orchestrated partner? Are you excited about getting a very mystical and magical and spiritual partner um, that's going to require you to first be practical in order for you to get it? Are you excited about that? Because I'm excited for you, okay? So that is what you will see with uh, Juno in Pisces or in the 12th house, all right? You have a blessed day and I will see you on the next video. Bye.